So, and I have to qualify. I wasn't going to mention our new product dimensions, but I've had, so there's some advice. Don't ever present at a conference the same week you launch a product. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's ideally what you're supposed to do from a marketing standpoint, but from a personal standpoint, it might not be recommended. So I am actually going to mention dimensions simply because so many people have asked, I thought if I threw in three slides, it would answer their questions, and I hope the rest of you will forgive me. But by and large, I do not want to make this about products. Instead, I'm going to give you a somewhat opinionated talk. One of the benefits of coming last is that those of you more knowledgeable than I about these topics can't chase me down and tell me that I'm wrong, because we'll all have gone our separate ways. But I'm sure you can find me if you feel strongly enough about it. So what I'm going to talk about is um, this idea, well, um, this was the original uh, um, title for the talk, which I came up with six months ago. So I've you know, basically adapted the talk to the title. But So if we can go, do I, is this my, um, there we are, very good. So there's this um, contention that when it comes to open science and data that publishers are, 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 are missing the boat, that they're just, they're just, they just haven't moved with the times. Uh, having digital science sprung out of nature, and although we are our own animal at the moment, we, have, we work with about 200 publishers. We have uh, many reformed publishers working as colleagues. And so um, I'm going to say that with emphatically no, I think publishers have taken steps to um, adapt to open science and data. Um, okay, perhaps it's not, a, it's not a speedboat, perhaps it's not a huge, um, you know, if they're on board, it's maybe more of a kayak, but it's a kayak that's navigated some early rapids, I would like to say. Um, and you'll see this nautical metaphor gets a bit tired, and you can poke fun at me for it, but it's the last, second to last talk of the day, so I thought, at the very least, you know, I can make you sort of tired with the tired nautical metaphor. Um, so do we need a bigger boat, continuing to beat the metaphor? I would say yes, but it's not an easy project. It actually takes a lot of different people coming together, and not just publishers. So let's look at the kayak first. It's a nice looking kayak. Um, so open access, the step one. Fortunately, between um, Raphael and then Anne following me, I don't need to say much about this. Um, growth in OA is slowing. It is one adaptation to open science and open data, but um, there is still an appetite for subscriptions. Market dynamics, Anne will talk quite a bit more about this, so I'll leave that to her. Um, but it's also the fact that OA is not supportive of a great deal of different um, publishers of valuable research outputs. So the fact that there's still an appetite for subscriptions, I would maintain, is not necessarily a bad thing. And Raphael actually touched on a few other good reasons why. Thanks for saving me time on that. Um, other steps that publishers have taken, um, you'll see gangplank, nautical, right? Um, so the past two years, article sharing was actually quite contentious three years ago. In the past three years, we've seen not only the STM voluntary principles, which basically legitimized private sharing of articles in private groups, which was not even really thinkable five years ago, at least in, in terms in the publishing community. Um, publishers have launched their own sharing initiatives. There is um, a project that's trying to put together a common infrastructure for sharing links or sharing read-only articles. Um, we have the content access initiative RA21, which I think needs as much support as possible. I'll touch on that again later. And publishers are supporting metadata initiatives. Uh, metadata 2020. The initiative for open citations as of today has 64 publishers, which I didn't have time to do the numbers, but the names mean it represents a very, very significant number of all published STM work. Their citations are openly available for anybody to use. Uh, ORCID and, of course, Crossref. So these are really, really positive steps, and I think that, I think that um, publishers do deserve a lot of, th this represents a lot of work, and publishers do deserve credit for having taken those steps. Um, so, but to get from kayak to something, this is a research vessel, by the way. I kept on looking for impressive ships, and I kept coming up with aircraft carriers and destroyers and really, really ugly looking speedboats. So I settled on a research vessel. Um, so here's the thing, right? If the solution is probably not going to always be a free ride. Um, first, there is the fact that subscriptions may be the only way to preserve truly, truly valuable uh, scientific research and scholarly research outputs that are of benefit to society. Um, and actually, we've had quite a few talks uh, in the past 48 hours that have talked about the fact that making everything free isn't necessarily the most important. Making it discoverable and relevant, ensuring people know it even exists, um, and making it easy to get to, those are maybe the most important things. So I would say maybe instead of demanding that everything be free, we think about in terms of accessible and affordable, where affordable can also mean free. 
So, um, and this is where my opinion starts to uh, come be injected. So what does accessible look like? These are fairly obvious, right? Um, wherever you are, be, having a relatively similar experience to getting to content, having the same type of content, uh, not having to jump through hoops to find things, and really quickly being able to understand if something is relevant to you, not having to um, pay 34 pounds to download something, read through it, and decide, oh, this has absolutely nothing to do with my work. Um, so how might that happen? Um, metadata, and you know, I, I, keep, I keep wrestling with the fact that the longer I do this, the more interested I am in metadata, yet metadata is just fundamentally not that interesting. Um, so I, I always wrestle with that, but it is so critical, isn't it? And there is a lot of work, but I mean, what we really need are common metadata standards across all stakeholders, right? We have metadata standards put out by funders, we have governments, we have domain-specific initiatives. Uh, what we need is a single metadata standard for all, um, so we need ORCID for everything, basically. Um, then making that metadata, um, so everybody has to adapt their data to the same standard, then they have to make all that data easily available to all stakeholders so that it can circulate freely. Um, and then you have to curate it, you have to make sure that the links remain current. Um, that's a lot of work, right? So, I mean, this is now we're building our research vessel here, hammering away at my metaphor. Um, so, all, look, at, um, look at all these initiatives, right? They're, they're great initiatives. Uh, they need support. Um, so, they need support in terms of development time, in terms of funding, but um, then once, and I know this, I mean, digital science needs, can, can do more work on this as well, and we have done. We've incorporated a lot of these, but it, it takes time and effort. Um, but when, when, um, standards have been agreed upon, then they need to be incorporated into things like article submission, publication dissemination systems. So um, one more thing about accessibility, and just bear with me, I was on the STM uh, working group on scholarly collaborative networks for years and years, and I'm, I'm a big fan of article sharing. Um, this poor man is locked out of his ship, right? Um, it, it's, just, it's just so hard to legitimately access content. Um, and there is, there is work to, to try and make this better, but it does take, I think, a certain critical mass. A, it's more than just a few publishers experimenting with it. There have to be agreed upon metadata standards and even infrastructure to facilitate easier access. And again, if, if you're not aware of RA21 and you're not supporting it, I would urge you to look at that, because as far as I know, that's, that, that is one of the few initiatives that's trying to bring together all the different stakeholders. There are also some... Um, there are also some institutional consortia and private companies that are doing good work around here as well. Um, we need better subscriber databases so that we can actually seamlessly grant legitimate access. Universities often know better than publishers who should be reading what. Um, that situation somehow needs to improve. Um, and publishers and vendors and institutions should be working on single sign-on access. Again, again, the common theme is that different stakeholders have to come together, and it's very easy for me to talk to stand up here and talk about doing it. To be fair, I have been involved and served my time and, and had people who employ me question why I'm spending so much time on things not directly related to my job to try and advance things like this. So I do understand that it's not an easy ask. So free or affordable. Um, again, I won't focus too much on, people will flip or, or start as many OA journals as as, as can be done, as can be sustainable, but there are other ways of bringing in revenue besides subscriptions. I think subscriptions will remain, um, but there are sharing initiatives that at least allow someone to gauge relevance. You can share an article so that they can decide whether or not they need it in a more substantive way. There are the rental models, streaming models, uh, publishers working with institutions and vendors on alternatives to interlibrary loan. Again, uh, micropayments, I think, and we, for anybody who was here for the blockchain session, which I sadly was not able to attend, I imagine that there must have been discussion around um, how blockchain can facilitate micropayment schemes that actually distribute revenue efficiently and with a minimum of administrative overhead. So in terms of open data, because part of this was it's all open, what are publishers supposed to be doing? Um, publishers actually have made supplementary data freely available for a long time. Um, the problem is it hasn't been that easy to find. Um, again, that goes back to relevance, to accessibility. Um, so one of the things that's, that's difficult is that um, researchers are, are confronted by, I had an entire slide on this, which luckily for you I deleted. Um, researchers are, face a, 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 
array of mixed messages on what they should do with their data. Funders tell them one thing. Uh, Domain-specific initiatives bringing together different uh, research organizations tell them something else. Publishers want them on their site. Institutions want them in their institutional repository. Um, we need ways of linking together open data resources. Scholex is worth looking into, again, supported by a number of publishers. And what that does is basically it's a, a, a sort of a link resolution service when you, um, when you deposit data, it tells you which repositories it can go into. Uh, we, need, we need to be able to get more easily to the data that's out there um, and have more standard policies. Again, there should be support for metadata curation. Some of the, we're talking about funds that are going just to APCs. Maybe some of those funds should be going into ins um, ensuring better metadata, better quality metadata, better access to metadata, funding those metadata standards work so that it doesn't just fall on institutions and, and publishers. Um, and then making the supplement of, this, this is an outgrowth of the point before, making sure all that data is linked and discoverable. discoverable. It has a DOI, it has an ORCID, a GRID ID, for those of you who don't know, GRID is a, actually a digital science database of disambiguated uh, institution identifiers that resolve all the different synonyms so you have a single canonical identifier. Things like that, the more, the more and that's free and available for anybody to use, the more type of, the more disambiguated metadata we have, the easier and more valuable this data becomes. So um, it's probably quite obvious, but I mean, researchers would be able to more, more quickly get to out research outcomes if they could easily, more easily find the outputs that, they are, that form the basis of their research. Academic institutions are still struggling to understand the scope and value of what they are funding and what they are producing. Um, again, if all the metadata is tied together, it's easier for funders to easily um, track return on investment. And, and this has been touched on quite a few times during this conference making it easier for the general public to get to outcomes or research outputs that are relevant to them. So again, I don't think that they're going to necessarily want the original research paper, as Raphael had just pointed out. But there are ways of, of un increasing the awareness of tangible outcomes for them, even if that's mainly limited to uh, more professional practitioners. So this type of um, effort around metadata, around adapting to open science, open data. It supports uh, resources like this. Uh, it supports tools that researchers depend upon. All of these tools, the better the metadata is, the more effective all of these are for all the people who use them. Um, and I really have been asked this quite a few times, seriously. So uh, the, the more metadata is out there, the better um, a tool like our newly launched Dimensions is. So you may have heard of this earlier this week. There's certainly been a lot of discussion about it. We have put together um, a database of publications, grants, policy documents, patents, clinical trials. It's a, a large amount of data, and the fact that most of this data is openly available has allowed us to generate four billion links between these research objects. That means all of these objects can be viewed in context. They're not standalone. Um, we have, obviously, we have done a lot of work. We've cleaned up all of these different data sources and mapped all of the different data uh, metadata within each type of data to the other database. So it, do, it wasn't, but you could see a world where this type of data, linked data, could be available to everybody. Um, and what that means is then you can see the relationships between the different types of data. So when you look at a publication, you automatically see the grants, the tweets, the citations, the patents that it's related to. That's, that's helping with accessibility, that's helping with relevance. Um, and the more that, that we all work towards supporting common metadata and more discoverable experimental data, uh, more standard uh, publications and document metadata, the, the more common this type of scenario can become. So, um, so we're talking again about what publishers can do, and this is where um, I get to put my opinions and then I run away when, and before you can tell me that you think I'm wildly off base. Um, Revenue and traffic, it is certainly true that if we all had consistent metadata that everybody was using and if everybody had access to quality, the same metadata from all publishers, you would get more readers, you would find more authors, and you have, you have opportunities for more additional revenue streams, which, um, some of which I talked about earlier. Um, obviously, the market position is better if, if, again, if metadata is common and not siloed, you have a better understanding of the relationship of your content to the, pri to the priorities of your customers, you're less dependent for traffic on Google or other resource-rich um, players. Uh, you are more aligned with the open science movement, and you're more aligned with the goals and missions of funders. If, you're, if your data is, your metadata rather, is cleaned up out there and e easily and equally available. And lastly, there are gains, obviously internal gains, right? Um, 
Internal systems can talk to each other. It's easier to track your content usage. It's easier to find authors because authors are consistently linked to papers, consistently linked to institutions. So, um, so the question I started, you know, will publishers support advanced open data? I would say this is, this is evidence that it's already begun, but there definitely is more work, um, and it requires, it requires bringing together different stakeholders. And it's not easy, but I do think, as shown in the previous slides, that there is definitely a benefit. Is that music like in the Oscars, pulling me off? <laughs> um, okay, that sounds nice. Yes, well, oh, is that what's happening? Um, just acknowledging a few colleagues and the title slide photo credit that led to the nautical metaphors being uh, imposed upon you all. And I did mention dimensions, if anybody, um, this, this is, there's a free version of this if anybody would like to try. Um, you can get to it that way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nico. And I thought it is really stunning. We all know that most of the supporting material also, uh, is free and is open from all of many publishers. And you showed, clearly showed us uh, that there is a lot to do with it. And I think we all know that we have to, a lot to do. Um, any one question? OK. So to thank you, Nico, once again.